freedom. country on a ship that I did not want to be on. The conditions were horrible. Some of us made it and some of us didn't. I remember running to be free up north. We used the Underground Railroad and Harriet Tubman would come get a group of us and we'd run away and escape to be free. And every time she went, she never lost a passenger. We called her our Moses, our conductor. And as we was running to be free, we could see the handmade quilts hanging outside on the line. And they had secret messages and patterns on them showing us where the safe houses were and pointing us in the direction that we needed to go. We thank you for that. Oh, Nat Turner. That man wanted his freedom so bad, he stirred up a uprising. A rebellion that cost him his life, like so many others. Lord, have mercy. But we persevered. We kept going. We didn't stop. Mm -mm. We had Frederick Douglass. He was a freed man, an educated man. And he went around the country and wrote about and spoke about what it was like being colored and how he was being treated here in America. Well, some listened. Change was slow in coming, but they listened. Yes, they did. Some, some did listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when I think about it, every war that America had been in, there was colored soldiers. Now, hold on, wait a minute, let me think. Now, let's see. Now, now there was uh, uh, Crispus Attucks during the Revolutionary War. He was one of the first to give his life. And then we had, during the Civil War, we had the Buffalo Soldiers. <laughs> and they called them Buffalo Soldiers because of their buffalo-like woolly hair. And that was the name given to them by our Native American friends. And then as time went on, there was World War I and World War II. And during those times, we had the Negro Army Corps of Engineers, the Harlem Hellfighters, and the Tuskegee Airmen, the Red Tails. Every branch of service, we were there. Army. Air Force, Navy, Marines, the Coast Guard, we were there. And who can forget Harry P. Perry? Why, he was one of the first to enlist as a United States Marine. Ooh, that man looks so good in his uniform. <laughs> oh, the girls would just giggle as he went by. <laughs> I remember one woman in the neighborhood called out to him. Hey, Harry! I got a daughter that's not married, Harry. Come on up here, Ada Jenna, come on. Oh, he would just smile and nod his head politely and go on about his business. We was just so proud of him. Yes, we were. Then as time went on, and things started to happen and move along. We had the likes of Madam C.J. Walker. Madam C.J. Walker was very, 
very important. Madam C.J. Walker was an orphan at seven years old. During that time, as she grew up, she became the first woman of color to become a millionaire. That's right. Now, she made her millions in hair care and beauty products. And let me tell you something. She had us looking good. <laughs> but you had to call her madam out of respect. She was quite the businesswoman, too. Had a big old mansion built out there right next to the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilts. They thought she was the maid helping the real owners move in. But that was her mansion. And that mansion stands there today as a legacy to her descendants. Oh, yeah. And you know that red light you ran trying to get to church on time? Well, you can thank Garrett Morgan for that, because he invented the traffic light. Next time, just leave a few minutes earlier. I don't have to tell you that. I'm talking to myself on that one. Mm-hmm. And as time went on, during the 1930s and 1940s, with all the trials and tribulations that we had to go through as a people, well, there were times that, even during those times, oh, uh, we do how to have a good time. <laughs> we was dancing and jiving and lindy hopping and jitterbugging. Harlem was the place to be. We could go to the cotton club, the Apollo Theater. We danced and had a good old time. You could hear musicians like Fats Waller going up and down the ivory singing his famous song, Hey Miss Behaven. You, we had Louis Armstrong, trumpeter extraordinaire. We had on the xylophone, we had Lionel Hampton. We had the big band royalty of Count Basie, Duke Ellington, Take the A Train. You could hear the sultry voice of Miss Lena Horne. Nat King Cole, Cab Calloway, Billy Holiday, Billy Eckstein, Bessie Smith, and ooh, Ella Fitzgerald and her scat. Ain't nobody could do it like Ella, nobody. We cheered on Jesse Owens, Olympic world champion, and his running mate, Ralph Metcalf. He showed Mr. Hitler a thing or two. We had boxing champ, Joe Lewis. We had the Negro Baseball League. We had tap dancers like Mr. Bojangles, Bill Robinson, and the Nicholas Brothers. We had gospel greats like Ethel Waters, Mahalia Jackson, gospel groups like the Mighty Clouds of Joy, and ooh, the Wings Over Jordan Choir, with their rendition of Amen singing in their bass voices. Amen, hallelujah. That ain't my note. That's a note for the choir. But you know what I mean. You get the point. We knew how to entertain and be entertained in spite of. And as time went on, we had innovators like Dr. Charles Drew. Now, Dr. Charles Drew was a medical doctor. And he created a way to store blood plasma. We call that today blood banks. He also created a process for blood transfusions, the foundation of what we use today. Seems like I remember. There was a woman, hard-working woman, a seamstress as I recall, worked hard every day, got on the bus to go home thinking about how she could relax and enjoy life, and she was ordered 
to give her a seat to a white man. Rosa Parks looked up at them, shook her head, said, no, I'm tired. Not today. Not today. Ooh, people on the bus said, oh, no, she did. Oh, yes, yeah, she did. They arrested her for civil disobedience, and the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s had officially begun. And under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King and many others, we decided to demonstrate our demands for equality. There were bus rides, boycotts, all kinds of things, all with the attitude of nonviolence. Thurgood Marshall and a team of top-notch lawyers argued before the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, that segregating the races was unfair and unjust. Well, the Supreme Court ruled in their favor. And the law of the land was now that every business, every facility, every school had to desegregate and integrate. Well, some people didn't take too kindly to that new ruling. And there was more civil unrest. And unfortunately, some people did lose their lives. But we kept going. We didn't stop. In fact, we felt so strongly, we even put our children on the front line. <laughs> you want to talk about being bullied? Talk to the Little Rock Nine. Nine students, nine teenagers, intentionally sent into a hostile environment to Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas, to integrate that school for the sake of an education. Those kids were harassed, bullied, called every kind of ungodly name you can think of. Books thrown to the ground. Got so bad, even the National Guard had to escort them to class. But you know what? Those kids didn't turn back. They kept going. They kept their eyes on the prize and didn't turn back. Hey. Nobody gonna turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking, marching up to freedom land. Ernest Green was the first to graduate out of the Little Rock Nine, and he graduated his dignity and integrity intact. Thurgood Marshall, well, he became the first African-American Supreme Court Justice, a position you can only receive as nominated by the President of the United States and as approved by Congress. And he served in that position for the rest of his life with his dignity and integrity. April 4th, 1968, a day we will never forget. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, a man of peace, Peace Prize Laureate, praying man, a godly man, was violently gunned down on that day. We were hurt, upset, inconsolable. We took to the streets. We were angry, frustrated. In that period of time, we call the Black Revolution. And with a raised arm and a clenched fist, our battle cry was power to the people, black power. No longer will you refer to us as colored or Negroes. We are African American. We are black and yes, we are proud. No longer 
will we be ashamed of our thick lips and our broad noses and our naturally kinky hair and different shades of black. We rejuvenated the black liberation flag that was created way back in the 1920s by Marcus Garvey, red, black, and green, the color significant of our lives in this country. Red for the blood that's been shed, black for the color of our skin, and green for the green grass of the motherland. We created our own movie heroes. John Sheff, can you dig it, brother man? Cleopatra Jones, I got you, sister woman, right on for the right on. We demanded that history books be rewritten to include our contributors in history. Poets like Nikki Giovanni, Maya Angelou, authors like Langston Hughes and James Baldwin, writers, playwrights, like Lorraine Hansberry and Charles Fuller for a soldier story. We needed these things and we demanded the respect. Products were created, beauty products like Ultra Sheen for our skin tones. Ultra Sheen to get that Afro together. I could probably use some of that right now. We also had people that like Don Cornelius, creator, writer, host of Soul Train. Y'all gonna leave me in the Soul Train line all by myself, huh? Y'all was doing the Soul Train line even after you got saved. Don't make me call your name. So, as we take this journey throughout history, also know this, that we didn't always get there all by ourselves. Oh no, we did have help. From the abolitionists that helped us through the Underground Railroad, throughout the Civil Rights Movement, and even up until today, we didn't always get there by ourselves. I'm talking about people that are not of color. I'm talking about white men and women, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, rich, poor, professionals, non-professionals, they too are a part of our history. With tears streaming down the faces of our elders, never once ever believing that they would ever live to see the day when our first African-American president of the United States, Barack Obama, would be twice inaugurated into the Oval Office. He didn't get there all by himself. He did have help, as many of us do even today. And there are so many more, so many more trailblazers. There's you, there's me, Miss Oprah Winfrey, Cicely Tyson, Angela Bassett. We have so many, Tyler Perry, Spike Lee, Muhammad Ali, Venus and Serena Williams. Michael Jordan, LeBron James, every aspect of American life, we were there. We are there. We are here. And there's so many more, too numerous to name. We can do this. And we can do this together. We're all part of everybody's history. We must never let our children forget our past. Educate them. Love them. Pray with them and for them. Give them the tools and the foundation that they need to empower them. Because we today are the living history for our children of tomorrow. I think that James Weldon Johnson said it best within the lyrics of our Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice. We together are facing the rising sun and a new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Thank you.
We're taking that walk with